It's time for my sweet Batman. Chapter 11 and lesson number 11, working out the shortest distance from a point to a line. Let's start off with a little diagram. Woo! We can see that we have this line, let's call it line L, and we've got this fixed point P. We are wanting to consider the distance from that fixed point to line L. Well, what you will notice is that the shortest distance from point P down to that line will always be the distance that is at right angles to the line. So you can see here the shortest distance from P to the line is the perpendicular distance from P to the line. So in other words, it's the distance going from P down to, let's call this point, point Q, which will be at right angles to the line. Because the distance PQ is at right angles to the line, well, that also means then that the vector PQ will be perpendicular to a vector that's in the direction of the line. So using all this information, using this knowledge, let's try answering a question. So example one, find the shortest distance from the point P, 3, 1, negative 4, to line L with equation x take away 1 over 2 equals y plus 10 over 2 equals z take away 10 over negative 3. Whenever you get one of these questions, what I like to do is to draw that out. So we're wanting to get the shortest distance from a point. So we're starting off just with a random point, point P, 3, 1, negative 4. And we're wanting the distance from that point to a line. So we're just going to draw a line. And we know that the shortest distance will be the distance that is, is at right angles to the line. So that is what we are wanting to find. First of all, what we do is we take the equation of the line and we express it in parametric form. So expressing it in parametric form, we will have x equals, y equals, and z equals. And they will be expressed in terms of some other parameter. So let's bring in the parameter t. So to get x equals, well, if you had x take away 1 over 2 equals t, so ignoring this fraction and this fraction just now, x take away 1 over 2 equals t, multiply both sides by 2, and then add 1 to both sides, so you'll have x equals 2t, add 1. So x is expressed in terms of the parameter t. Do the same thing with y, so again, multiply both sides by 2, so you'd have y add 10 equals 2t, subtract 10 from both sides, and y would equal 2t take away 10. So y as well is expressed in terms of the parameter t. And finally, you've got z take away 10 over negative 3 equals t. Multiply both sides by negative 3. So z take away 10 equals negative 3t. And then add 10 to both sides. So z will equal negative 3t add 10. We know that point Q lies on this line. And we just worked out the equation of the line in parametric form. So we know then that Q will have the coordinates 2t add 1 for x, 2t take away 10 for y, and negative 3t add 10 for z for some value of t. So Q will have that coordinate for some value of t because it lies on the line. Let's take that then and let's think, right, well, this distance here from P to Q, well, remember that vector was perpendicular to a vector that's in the direction of line L. So let's work out the vector PQ. So to work out the vector PQ, we will have Q take away P. So you imagine if you wrote this down in vector form. So if you wrote this down as the components, so you could have your 2t add 1, and then your 2t take away 10, and then negative 3t add 10. pq will be q take away p. So in other words, if we go over the page, we will have that 2t add 1, and then we're taking away the x coordinates, we're taking away 3. We will have the 2t take away 10, and then we're going to be taking away 1. And we'd have the negative 3t add 10 take away the negative 4. So all we're doing is taking Q, if we wrote it in vector form, so 2t add 1, 2t take away 10, and negative 3 add 10, and we're subtracting the coordinates of P, which was the 3, the 1, and the negative 4. So PQ will be Q take away P, so this is what you'd have. Simplify that, and we end up getting 2t take away 2. We'd have 2t take away 11, and negative 3t add 14 if you're simplifying each of these. If you think about the vector that is in the direction of line L, 
So going back the way, this here is line L. Just remember that at the bottom, what you've got are the components of the vector, which is in the direction of line L. So the two, the two and the negative three will be the components of the vector. So we know that vector A with the components two, two, negative three is a vector that's in the direction of line L. So we've got the components for the vector P, Q, and I've got the components of the vector A. What do you know about these two vectors though? Perfect, these two vectors are perpendicular to one another. So P, Q is perpendicular to vector A. And because of that, this is when you need to think back to something that you learned in higher. Remember when you had A dot B and they were at right angles to one another, what was A dot B equal to? Zero! Perfect. So here you know that PQ, if you worked out PQ dot A, so if you worked out the scalar product, well that would be equal to zero because they are perpendicular. So we know then that PQ dot A, so we would have the 2t take away 2 times 2. Add on the 2t take away 11 times 2. Add on the negative 3t add 14 times negative 3. So if we write that out. If you multiply out the brackets and simplify that, well that's going to give you 4t take away 4 add 4t take away 22 add 9t, be careful with the negatives, and then take away 42 equals 0. Rearrange that, simplify it, and you'd have 17t take away 6 to 8 equals 0. So 17t would equal 6 to 8, which means then that t would equal 4. So we now know the value of t. Because we know this value of t, well, we could work out this vector pq in terms of numbers rather than having it in terms of t. So we can go back up and we can express pq just as numbers. So replace t with Four. So doing that just over the page, we will have the 2t take away 2 will become 2 times 4 take away 2. The 2t take away 11 will become 2 times 4 take away 11. And negative 3t add 14 is negative 3 times 4 add 14. Which means then we will have the components of pq as 6, negative 3 and 2. So that there are the components of vector pq. So going back to the diagram here, PQ, we know that vector has those components, the 6, the negative 3, and the 2. We are wanting to work out that distance though. How would you go about working out the distance? Perfect, if you want to work out that distance, the length of PQ, you could just work out the magnitude. So, the magnitude of PQ will equal, and that becomes the square root of, and you'd add the 6 squared, add the negative 3 squared, add on the 2 squared. And if you work that out, well, that becomes the square root of 49, which gives you 7. So we know the length of vector PQ will be 7 units. So you can say then that the shortest distance from the point P to line L is therefore 7 units. Woo! Try some of these questions on page 50. There are not a lot of these questions, but make sure you practice it to make sure that you understand how it is done. Unit 3 booklet. Page 50. Best of luck. Bye.